for my A-level students, I am always telling them they need to do an equivalent amount of independent study to contact time that they have in class. So if you have an hour's lesson face to face with a teacher or in a lab, then I would expect you to be doing an hour's independent study, but not necessarily related to the content of that lesson. The problem is most schools, most teachers don't necessarily have time to teach you what to do in independent study. So he is how to spend your time independently studying. So at A-level, you are a lot more independent. There is a lot more emphasis on you as students to go away and do work outside of class, over and above the classwork and the homework. So when we're talking about independent study, this actually starts off in class. Because what I want you to do in class is to not worry about copying down every single thing that the teacher says or copying down every single thing that's on the board. Make rough notes. And if these don't look perfect, because I know some of you love to have absolutely perfect notes, if these don't look perfect, don't worry, we are going to do that later. Now, lots and lots of teachers will provide you with their PowerPoints. It's a very, very normal thing to do for sixth formers. Either they'll just pop them up on the VLE in advance and you can print them out and take them to the lessons so you don't actually have to copy down anything on the board you've already got it in front of you or keep it on a shared area somewhere or give them to you as handouts during lessons this is something that is really really helpful so if your teacher isn't currently doing that at the moment ask them if they can and that way you won't have to worry about writing down what's on the board or everything your teacher says you can just focus on trying to understand the new concepts and then doing the classwork now with this set of notes the classwork that you've done you are generally going to forget a whole chunk of it as soon as you walk out that door this is completely normal okay do not freak out about it don't worry as soon as you stop doing it you might go from chemistry straight to french where you're using a completely different set of skills and the exact details of the mechanism that you were doing in chemistry has been completely forgotten don't worry as part of your independent study, I want you to take the notes that you did in class. And I'd like this to be within a week of the lesson. So within a week, so you've got five hours worth of lessons in a week. Um, within a week, I'd like you to have copied up neatly those five hours worth of notes. Now I do mean copied up neatly because what we are doing here is we're making our revision notes, our revision folders. So you are gonna need a set of folders for each subject to have at home. Your classwork notes stay in your school folder, which travels to and from school. But what we do is copy these up neatly. We're basically making our own version of a revision guide. Now to the notes that you're copying up from your classwork notes, these are the ones that you make look perfect. These are the ones you make look neat. And to these, we need to add as many examples as you can find. Now, we're not doing actually a lot of thinking here. I'm not asking you to answer a load of questions. I'm just asking you to find examples and collate them and put them all in one place so that when we come back to it later, everything we need is in that one place. We can be making flashcards um, of our keywords, we can be adding in little bits, colour coding our keywords, but make sure we have enough examples from videos or from textbooks or from any other source added into your notes and this applies for every single subject. It is at this point if there is anything you don't understand about the classwork make sure you either go back to your teacher and say i didn't understand this bit can you clarify it or you go and find another source that will explain it in a different way to help you understand it so the first time maybe we're a bit sketchy but the second time when we write a couple of notes that's when we properly make sure we know what we're doing within a month of that lesson and yeah you are going to need to keep a list in the front of your folder of the lessons notes written up reviewed within a month reviewed within three months you are going to need to do this. Within a month of that lesson, what I'd like you to do is to review your notes. And that is literally spending five minutes looking over your notes, not necessarily adding anything to them. But what we're going to start to do now is start to use, actively use that knowledge. So quickly go over your notes and then if you've got practice questions in there that, you've, that you did earlier that you worked out the examples for, 
cover up the worked answer, look at the question and see if you can do it again. But we're not asking you to think too much because you've already got the answer there. You can just check it a little bit later. You can do lots and lots of multiple choice questions. They are in nearly every single exam now and they are a skill that you need to practice. I have loads of these sorted by topic for you over on my website. These are a really good active but low stakes way to revise a topic that you did a month ago and just to refresh your knowledge. It is also at this point you can go and find exam questions about the topic. And when you do find an exam question about the topic, and it may only be kind of like, you know, part B of a question, or it may only be like one question every other year on the exam paper, print out two or three copies of this and stick it in your folder with the notes. Print out the mark scheme as well. Now try to do the question, and we're not expecting to get it perfect at this point by any means. Try to do it, and then in a different colour, mark it, paying attention to what the mark scheme says is important, those spellings of keywords and where you draw your arrows. And then file it all away in your nice neat folders for another point. Now, within three months of this initial lesson, so this is where your checklist comes in so you don't forget to go back to something three months later, go back again very quickly, look over your notes, very quickly look at your flashcards, quickly try the multiple choice questions, but this point we're going to start doing exam questions related to that topic. Now, you should, if you've been paying attention to what I've been saying, have these printed, ready, waiting for you in your folder, because we did that as part of kind of like the one month review of how to revise, study, something. So they should be there ready and waiting for you. And then have a go at those questions, look at the mark scheme and see if we can get it bang on at this point. Then when we come to revise, say six months, a year later, this topic, in your folder, you have a perfect set of notes that you fill in any gaps of understanding. You've got lots and lots of worked examples. You've got flashcards. You've tried the multiple choice questions a few times and you've got exam questions marked and improved with the mark scheme for every single topic waiting for you in your folder. I know this seems like a lot of work, but if you keep on top of it and do everything a little bit by little bit by little bit, because each of those review bits, the, you know, writing up the notes, that should probably only take you about 15, 20 minutes. The going back after a month, again, I'm only asking you to do 10, 15 minutes of trying an exam question, trying a few multiple choice questions. So each of these isn't like hours and hours worth of revision, but 15, 20 minutes within a week, 15, 20 minutes within a month, and then 15, 20 minutes within three months, all for one lesson, one contact time that you had with your teacher. And this constant going back, little and often, little and often, to a topic is really, really gonna secure it in your long-term memory, and you will have made yourself for very, very cheap, because I'm not suggesting you go out and buy loads and loads of revision guides, um, for very, very cheap, a brilliant, brilliant revision resource. Now there are lots of revision guides out there which have lots and lots of example exam questions in and they are a brilliant thing to add in. But make sure when you are buying a revision guide, it is one that has questions in because something that is just a very, very short textbook with no extra questions in, I'm not sure that sort of thing is worth the money because, you know, I make you videos that do exactly the same thing for free and you just have to sit there and write out the video. So I'd say those kind of things aren't very good use of money, but the ones that have loads of those questions in, like retrieval questions and then exam practice questions, those ones are a brilliant use of your money. Um, so there you go guys, that is how to do independent study for A-level. You have a lesson, you spend a little bit of time writing up, you spend a little bit of time sorting out questions, you spend a little bit of time revising questions. Now, if you're going to do an hour's independent study, it could be you spend 20 minutes writing up one of the lessons from this week, the next 20 minutes doing um, a month review for a completely different subject, and then the third 20 minutes, a three month review for your third or fourth subject. So this can fit in with your independent study really, really well. Um, good luck guys, I hope you find this helpful. I have lots, lots more things to help you study coming up. Um, good luck guys, we can do this, because 
you know, win this together and I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.